don't believe in monsters. I'm not saying that I do. There are stories, you know. Hundreds of years ago, before mines, before ships, this region was supposed to be ruled by a completely different force. Something that lived underneath the waves. Something that waited in the icy depths of the North Sea. Apparently, at one time, it was part of the land. But people arrived in a walk, cracked out of the ground, and slithered into the sea. Our rivers are said to be where its limbs and its body once lay. Some say there was like a sea dragon, scaled and spiked from its bright red eyes to its long, heavy tail. Others say it was more of a snake or an eel, slimy and green. Some even say that it was more of a beast-like fish, like a long shark, immense in size and strength. Something that all descriptions state is that its teeth were as tall as horses, and that its size could send huge waves that would just tower over villages and then drag them into the sea. And that it was always wanting the land back for itself. One day, a group of children were said to be watching the sea and the clouds. They knew a storm was coming and that the monster would come with it. But uh, they weren't afraid. They didn't think any of it was fair. Their homes and their families waiting for the day that this monster just takes them. Well, you can't see their point. Anyway, these children made a plan. That night, as the sun was setting and as the wind howled around the houses, they snuck out from their beds. They got the heaviest chains and the biggest rocks that they could find took the fishing boats and they rowed out to sea. And the weird. It was, as, it was as if even the daylight feared the beast, because just as the last bit of light fled from the sky, its head broke the water and its glowing red eyes that just came hurtling towards the children. And it was stretching open its mouth, ready to swallow them whole. The bands had already started. They were no strangers to the North Sea wind. They cracked up their sails and their boats were whipped to the side. And the chains linking them all tightened as the monster's neck lunged against them. And it wasn't happy. It struggled, it snapped, it thrashed with all of its strength. But the children just kept riding the wind round, feeding the chains into the water, tangling the monster further. And as they released the rocks that were tied to the ends of the chains into the sea, well, the battle was over. The monster was said to let out this one last echoing roar before it just sank to the depths of the sea. Of course, when they got back, they got an absolute hiding. <laughs> but they also got more hugs and kisses than ever before. Because they'd saved their families. Some do wonder whether on a stormy, rainy night they can still hear the beast. 
still hear its roars. Others say not to worry. It's just the thunder and the wind. I don't know. Those bands were always said to have their fishing boats at the ready, though. Just in case. 